This is Grit Vic in Whaling Station. Uh, this was actually the first whaling station that was set up on South Georgia. What most people think of when they think of whaling is small wooden ships heading out to sea um, in the 17 and 1800s, catching sperm whales and, and creating blubber, which was used to light the lamps of London. But what many people don't realize is that the height of whaling, especially in the Southern Ocean, was in the 1950s. More whales were caught in the 1950s than any of the preceding decades in the 1900s. When we look at accounts from those whalers, those like young men who'd mostly travelled from the Hebrides in Scotland and from Norway to come and work here, they recount seeing 30 metre whales, huge animals, being pulled up onto the fencing platform here and completely you know, taken apart and processed in as little as 20 minutes. It was an extremely honed process. Um, and they had great big rotary saws that would saw down through these and they were so dangerous. Uh, these saws would sometimes split and with every single whaling station you also find a significantly well attended graveyard, mostly with young men who had just started their career and uh, what a horrifying job to have to do. I mean it was it's skilled work, it was really hard work and many of them lost their lives doing it. And what for? What was all this whale oil, all this blubber used for? It was mostly rendered down into oil, hydrogenated, and used for things like margarine, um, soap, these menial products that I don't really think justify the extreme loss of life. When we look around these waters and see the sheer magnitude of marine life and the numbers of whales that we've encountered, that's a really awe-inspiring thing to see. It's, it speaks of the resilience of marine life and it's incredible that species that were driven to such small fringe populations have managed to rebound so successfully. It's really, really heartwarming.